What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot Quick Tip. In this video, we're gonna take a look at one way you can create condensation and water droplets inside of Keyshot. To get started, make sure the object you're trying to add condensation to is selected and the material graph is open. In this case, I'm going to be adding water droplets as well as condensation to my Keyshot bottle. And since it is a drink bottle, I'm going to make sure that my applied material is a solid glass material. If you aren't using a glass object, no problem at all. You can still use this method to create believable condensation on almost any material. Once you have your base material situated, the next step is creating water droplets on your object's surface. You can do this by using an image map that you've sourced or created, but you can also do this by using the procedural spots texture within Keyshot. In this quick tip, I'm going to be using a combination of both to get my desired result. To start with, I'll apply a spots texture by right-clicking the Material Graphs workspace and selecting spots from the texture flyout menu. I'll then select my newly added texture and hit the hotkey C to enable preview color and get a better look at my texture before I adjust my spots to match the model scale. I'll add some distortion so the spots aren't perfectly circular and then add a little bit of fall off. Now, when I connect my spots to the glass material's roughness input, the end result will be that the white colored background areas will become rough while the black spotted areas will remain smooth. This is what's going to allow me to create the appearance of a frosty chilled glass while creating the clarity of water droplets sitting on the surface. At this point, I'll drop my water streaks image map that I sourced online into the material graph and attach it to the background color of my spots texture. Now for me to dial in the frostiness, I'll right click the connection between my water streaks image and my spots texture, and I'll add a color to number node. This node is going to let me control the values of my image texture, which will determine the amount of roughness or clarity my surface exhibits. I'll then adjust my input and output parameters until I end up with a mid to light gray background and dark black water streaks and spots. Once I've got it set to where I generally want it, I can toggle the color preview off to get a better idea of how my surface looks. If my surface is too frosty or rough, I can reduce the output from number to decrease the level of roughness. If my surface is not frosty enough, I can do the opposite and increase the output from number to increase the background's roughness. At this point, I'm almost done setting up the texture for my condensation. I'm just going to go back into my spots texture and make some quick adjustments so that there's more variety to my droplet sizes. With my texture finally set up, it's time to add my displacement node. I'll do this by right clicking my material graphs workspace again and selecting the displace node from my geometry flyout menu. I'll plug the output into my parent materials geometry input and then I'll plug my spots texture into my displace node. I can then adjust my displacement height as needed. Your displacement height will be entirely dependent on your scene's overall scale, so don't be afraid to experiment. I'm going to go ahead and set my displacement height to negative 0.75, and then I'll hit the Execute Geometry button either here under the Node Properties or by hitting the Execute Geometry icon in the top right corner of my real-time view. Note that the reason I'm using a negative number instead of a positive number for the displacement is because earlier I inverted the background color and spot color of the texture. Had I not been using the texture to also drive the roughness of the material surface, I would not have needed to invert the texture's colors and would also not have needed to invert the displacement parameter. At this point, I'm ready to execute my geometry node and allow the scene to res up to view the final product. Although setting up your condensation this way isn't entirely perfect, I think overall it makes a very convincing final output. Hopefully this quick tip helps add a bit more chill to your key shot scenes. And as always, if you're interested in more useful key shot content, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this quick tip in the comment section below.